everyone. Well, this is a bit of an unusual subject, isn't it? Now, I've had to photograph the Smarties because nowadays they're not all shiny and lovely like they used to be. I think they're sort of safer for our children to eat. So I took a photograph before they discontinued and um, we're going to paint these and they are really fun. Now I'm adding some masking fluid to some areas that I really want to keep white because we want these to look three-dimensional. Catch that drip. Brilliant. That won't matter. I'll peel that off before it dries. It's trouble doing it upright. Let's just catch that one before that one goes. It's better to leave it really because otherwise you can make it worse. And so each little dot that I can see that's got a highlight and that way it's just easier. You can paint quite quickly the washes and um, you're not likely to lose these lovely bits that really make them stand out. There's quite a lot of highlights aren't there? It's a, a good photo this one. And yep, there's one on there. Okay, so we need to let that dry now. This is such a great exercise. I know you're all going to enjoy it. Now, first of all, I'm going to mix up a background wash. I'm going to use some French ultramarine blue and some burnt amber. I'm going to keep it quite pale, quite watery. And on the blue side, and that's going to be our background color. And just wash that in all around the Smarties. If you're a bit frightened about not getting it on quickly, uh, what you can do is, um, is wet the paper first and that will give you a bit of time but just remember to go a little bit thicker with um, the paint as you go on if you do that. Now we're going straight over any shadow that might be there. working really quickly. Right, I'm just going to turn this around the other way. I think for some reason it turns out the wrong way. Well, have I? No, I haven't. <laughs> Going a bit silly here. So that's that. Over that shadow. Just keep teasing around all those areas. That's why you need a good point. That's there, that's that one, and for some reason put highlight on the shadow. I think that's what was confusing me. Um, quite easily done. Let's take that out now. Because we wouldn't want a highlight on the shadow. Just pull that in. And I'm just checking everywhere else. probably overlapped a bit but some of those are dark so that's fine yeah we'll leave that to dry now 
For each one we're going to do the same but in different colours. Now we can alter some of the colours but I think it's quite nice to keep them in the colours that they are. So just pin that there and I think if we start with this mauve one and this red one that will be a really good place so that we can work out where everything is and not get too confused. So let's start with a cadmium red nice and thick we're not worrying about the shadow at the moment and just pop that all over in that smarty circle doesn't that make you feel hungry over our masking fluid so that comes down there a bit and there are any edges it's much darker and there's a lighter bit coming through by that shadow so all we've got to do take off some of the paint and just pull that through there for a little bit of light. It's amazing what you can do with a few Smarties. And I'm going to use some intense violet, mix that with some alizarine crimson, quite thick. And whilst that paint's still wet, I'm just going to trip that into the outside. That'll give us quite a soft, smooth edge. I'll darken that even more if we need to later. And I'm going to save that colour to put the shadow over there when that little bit's dry. Let's just make... I'm going to save that dark in there for my shadow when that's dry. If I do it too soon, it's going to pull up what's underneath and that'll be a little bit messy. It's going to tidy up that little bit of a blob there. And... Let's go for our blue. I think either a Dorset blue or a Prussian blue would be quite good for that. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's a dark around the edge. And then lighter throughout the middle. And the same for this one here. So we're using Dorset Blue. This is so therapeutic. And then just because it's Dorset Blue we can go quite thick without adding anything else. So lots of thick pigment and we can just run that into the edge and that will give us some darks. Dark edge all the way around there. And that's red, that's purple, that's purple, and there's one of those blue ones here, so we might as well put that in now. Now, don't worry if the colours don't match exactly, because that really doesn't matter. Shape. And if we want a bit of a highlight, take off some of the pigment, maybe pull that through there. And then the dark shape. Just thick paint. I'm just using very thick Dorset Blue with hardly any water and that can go in around the edge. Oh, that's a bit dark there. Beautiful. Now we've got a green there and there. So that Dorset Blue, I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon yellow. And 
Okay, we can add a little bit of light. You'll see slightly light around there. And there. Didn't mean to go outside the line, so if we do something like that, just get a clear brush. Just tease that, and that's going to be the shadow anyway later. And then we're going to add a little bit more dorset blue into that. And just put the dark shape in around the edge. And that can bleed in. It's such a lovely soft edge. And let's go for a purple. So intense violet is really good for the, the purple ones. And we've got one there. And then it's a little bit darker as we come around there. So to get darker, just thicker paint. Put that in. enough to eat aren't they? I'll do this one quickly. Lighter on the other side so just more water. Let's catch one of those drips, I don't want it to cauliflower. Going with some thicker paint at the bottom, it's quite a lot darker there. Adding just a little bit of Prussian blue or Dorset blue, doesn't matter to that intense violet. And get some of that dark around the edges. And if you squint, you can see exactly where it is on the reference photograph. I am feeling hungry. Right, let's clean our brush really well and get some of those yellows in now. So cadmium yellow, but it must be a clean brush. Mm, it looks a bit green. I always seem to get my yellows green. Let's wash off that. And a bit more on there. Should be yellow. That's it. Touches there. Okay, so we've just done the yellow and we've added a little bit of the Dorset blue into that, and now I'm putting in some of the cadmium red ones. So a little bit darker on the outside, I can put in a little bit of alizarin zip crimson just to darken that even more in places and then we can go in with the intense violet for those very dark shapes it's got quite a lot showing here and then we've got that dark mix that one's dry so let's go back into our mix of alizarin crimson and intense violet for a nice dark shadow and let's pop that one in it's a nice definite shape it's not a runny shadow and that can go in now otherwise we will forget and then i'll add that to these when those are dry i think well we can use probably a rose madder, permanent rose, something like that would be quite nice. Just water down, or a water down alizarin crimson would also work equally as well. So nice and watered down. It's very pale on top. Thicker as we come down. Nice strong colour that one. And the same here. It's quite thick there. 
gosh, that's a gorgeous vibrant colour. And then take some of that off. A nice soft line, we want them to bleed. Is anybody getting hungry yet? The light's really hitting those. So take the pigment off. I've got an orange there. Let's pop the oranges in there. Captain Orange, always good. So many beautiful colours. And here. There's a little bit of the orange there too. Right, so what I'm going to do is water some of that down for where the light's hitting it that side. Pull that through. So we're making sort of a light shade, a medium shade and a darker shade. The same for the one up there, the light's hitting it just there. And then I'm going to add some cadmium red and some alizarine crimson for the shadow colour. So that, just run that in. So that's a soft shadow. And uh, I'm lucky enough to catch that before it starts to dry. What other gorgeous colours have we got? Well, we've got some those nice brown Smarties, so they can be a rich sepia. It's a bit watery. And it's very light where that light's hitting it. So just, again, take off some of that paint, pull that out. And then go very thick and dark underneath. So pull that round to there. That's a bit of a dark line there. Putting it in now makes it a softer line. And then we have another of those chocolatey coloured ones there and there. And there. Quite a lot of these. So watery that side. A much thicker paint, less water over here. And then very thick paint. Let's just get the shape of that. light a bit and go thicker and they are just coming alive it's a bit darker there and we have one more here but there's not too much of that one showing it's just that sort of shape And just pull that out because the light's hitting that on top nice and softly. And then we've got these two mauve ones here. And although it's not finished, it's sort of looking like it should do. So intense violet. Darker on the outside. And it gets lighter in the middle. light and then into the thick paint around the edge okay so we'll let that get really dry and then we're adding some of these shadows that are coming off of the Smarties.
Now, I think the next thing I'm going to do is get some of my base shadows in and we're going to reflect some of these lovely colours into that. Now I'm going to use my French Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber, just thicker than we've done it in the first place. And so we can start with that shadow there, take it right up to the Smarty. And then that comes around and there, right into that one. And I think they really just come together at this point. Now I'm going to use my other brush, because what I'm going to do with my little brush, I'm just going to get a little bit of the red that we've got in here. Um, we're going to put some of that reflecting into that shadow. And the same here, there's a little bit of a shadow there. And make sure that whatever you're putting in is thicker. Stop that from going nasty. And then put these blue shadows here. Just drip in some of that dorset blue. A little bit of the red. Soften it in a little bit. And a little bit of the yellow, why not? But just make sure that we're adding more pigment and not more water, because if we add more water we get nasty things and that sort of gives that a really interesting effect but we've got that one carries on around here to the Smarty. And again with our other brush. Just making sure it's clean, some of that dorset blue can go in here. And just soften it out a little bit. Some of the red. Tease it round. It's also subtle, but catch those drips there. So it's a little bit messy, but it will come together. Now we've got this. Nice dark shape off of here. And I'm just popping some intense violet straight into that. Um, that one joins that one. It's coming out a bit mauve, but we won't worry too much. some yellow to that. And some sepia can come away there. Add a few more bits, it's that shape. The more you look, the more you see.
it's way there. I'm really fancying some Smarties now. I'm just doing them quite quickly. I better stop there because um, I won't get the colours to run into it. Let's add some of that green in here. A little bit of the red. some of the mauve. Wash that brush well. Oh no, there's not too many shadows left are there? We've got this little bit here. Some of that red and some sepia. And one last little bit there. Tiny little shadow. That's in shadow here. Some of that green in. And some of the um, dorset blue. Let's tease that in. Alright, we're going to just tease that a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to. Um, get that very very dry and then we're going to take out these marks. I've somehow managed to lose my mask away so what I'm going to do is just rub hard which is a hard way of doing it with my finger. Bring back those highlights and I'm just going to sparkle on the now. And the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to um, take out all the pencil marks at this stage. So rub quite hard. Now it all looks quite a lot cleaner. And I'm just going to put in a few odd marks to tidy up here and there. Use my tiny brush and let's start with some alizarine crimson and some intense violet and let's just put some definite shapes here because they've gone a little bit soft and I think the orange can be the same colour that won't really matter um, down to that one it's much darker than I've done it and that's much darker, so let's just darken that a little bit. And a nice dark line around there where it joins the shadow. It's just where the Smarties sitting. I put it on white paper so that you've got the coloured reflections going into it. Put a little bit of a shadow across there. dark bit there, let's get a bit more pigment on there. Same with this one. And it's really starting to come together. 
this orange one is going to have a little bit more definition just here and there. And all right, so now the intense violet, I'm adding a little bit of Prussian blue into that, or Dorset blue. Dorset blue's gone in. That's quite dark that side. That's dark. Sort of reflects onto that one. And a dark shape underneath there. And right here. I'll shout if you see any I've missed. But again, Okay, into the Dorset Blue now, just more of the Dorset Blue, get a nice sharp edge on that bit. And around here. A little bit there where that touches. yellows are fine and just double check the green that could maybe be a little bit sharper there yeah and I would say that's done and yeah tuck in everyone